Hello everybody and welcome back to the last video in the wireless penetration testing section. Now what I want to show you in this video is what security measures you can take in order to prevent some of the attacks. Now first thing that you might actually ask yourself is why is the authentication attack even possible? Well there is not really a measure that you can take in order to prevent it but there is a uh, a certain version, which is uh, 802.11w, which you can switch to in order to protect yourself from the, the authentication attack. It basically works as it uses the protected management frames, which can detect and prevent the, the authentication attack. There is no other known uh, security measure that you can take in order to prevent it from the, the authentication attack. Now, uh, now I believe that the VPA3 uh, security measures will have some kind of a uh, protection against the authentication attack, but we will have to wait for it to come out in public uh, before we actually see that. So the next thing I want to show you is basically let me just go to my to my uh, router, so 192.168.1.1, and I will log in to my router right here. And I will show you some security measures you shouldn't do. Now some people, let me just log in. Some people, for example, think that if they put their network in hidden, uh, or the, if they hide their network name, that they will be safe. So basically the attack that I showed you in the previous video, which was discovering the hidden network name and connecting to the hidden network with just a name, uh, some people think that it is a security measure in and in reality, it is even easier to hack that kind of a network than a simple network with a VPA2 password. So, as we can see right here, let me just find it, wireless LAN. And you can see right here, under the, since I didn't still change the settings from the previous attack, I uh, have here broadcast SSID no, which for me stands for the network being hidden. Now, for you, it might be something different. And... It might be in some other section, since this router is not the same as your router. This is an old router, so it doesn't have a bunch of the options. It is very easy to find uh, the broadcast SSID option. Uh, what you want to do is for sure click here on yes. Uh, and basically, uh, let me just find right here. Where did I change it? The authentication type right here. You do not want to have an open system ever. You do not want to have on web 64 bits or basically any web. You most likely for now on want to have on VPA2 minus PSK for private share key. So you want to have a password for it and you want to have a strong password for it. So mix the symbols, numbers and letters and make it as long as you can and also remember it. So this is the strongest at the moment, security measure, the VPA2, and a strong password. Which, uh, if you have a strong password, it will take a hacker days or perhaps weeks in order to crack your password. The longer the password, the harder for it. Uh, the longer the password and the more symbols and letters and numbers it has, the harder it will be for it, for the hacker to crack it. If you have a password of only, for example, numbers it will be very easy to crack it for anyone with a little bit of knowledge now as i said so hidden networks will not protect you so let me just submit this right here since i set it back to the vpa2 uh, security measure and with the password the next thing that i want to talk about is the mac filtering which is right here now you might think that the mac filtering will be enough to actually prevent uh, a hacker to get into your wireless network. Now, it might be enough if you also specify the password for the wireless, but if you only put the MAC filtering without the password, basically anyone with a little bit of knowledge, and for now on, you as well, can change your MAC address, as I showed you even before how you can do that, and with the changed MAC address, you can basically bypass the MAC filtering. Now, if you have to use a MAC filtering, uh, there is basically a blacklisting and whitelisting. Blacklisting is basically blocking a certain MAC addresses from connecting to a wireless access point, 
and whitelisting is allowing certain MAC addresses to connect to a wireless access point. Now, it would be better to use a whitelist, but both of them can be cracked very easily as we can just run the arrow dump program and see the clients connected to the network and see their MAC addresses. Then we can deauthenticate those clients or basically just one client and we can change our MAC address with the MAC changer as I showed in the previous tutorial. So basically MAC changer is a simple program. Let me just show you right here. So just type here MAC changer and it will give you a bunch of the options. You can type dash dash help and it will basically give you the option to spoof a MAC address with this minus M option. You can type any MAC address you want and basically you would type the MAC address of the client that is connected to the wireless access point that uses the whitelist and basically then you the authenticated client and you connect with his MAC address. It is simple to bypass. Uh, another thing that sh you shouldn't do uh, or basically another thing that you should do is if you want another security measure you could use the enterprise wireless. Now the enterprise you might ask why should we use that? Well basically every user has different password in enterprise. Even if someone got the password uh, or hacked the password of some user he would only be able to target one user. So it is also a thing to reconsider using since it does provi provide a certain level of security. Uh, basically, as I said, if you were to get a password from one user, you wouldn't be able to do much. Uh, you wouldn't be able to run the uh, man in the middle attacks, for example. So it is a good security measure. But I believe not many of us or basically almost nobody at home has the wireless enterprise. So you can reconsider using that. Then that would be it for the preventing the attacks that we covered right here. Now, hopefully the VPA3 will provide us with a lot more security, even though the VPA2 is enough. Uh, basically, the VPA2 will provide you enough security if you use a strong password. Uh, if you use a weak password, not even VPA3 can prevent the, the wireless access point getting exploited or compromised. So that would be about it for the security measures. We, with this, we finish the wireless access point section or basically hacking the wireless access point. Uh, we will also cover, as I said, the evil twin attack later on. We will do it manually. I'll show you what all the files you will need to do that, but more about that later on. And we will continue hacking in the next lectures. Uh, hope I see you there and take care. Bye.